Job chapter 31. Job chapter 31 is not Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Job and the rich young, young, young ruler that came to Jesus are the most righteous men in the Bible. Where the, Jesus laid down, the, laid down the Ten Commandments. He said, I had done them all. And Jesus never rebuked him. Job is going to, in this chapter, he's going to tell you everything that he's done. He is righteous. But all men have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. You can never claim this. And if Job had died in, be, between 31 and 32, you'd probably go to hell. Two characters to study is Job 31 and, and the rich young ruler. Let's begin. I, Job, made a covenant with my eyes. Job spoke to his eyes. He made a covenant, made an agreement. Why then should I think upon a maid? What that verse is saying right there, I'm not going to look at another woman. For well, what portion of God is there from above? What inheritance of the Almighty from on high? What Job is talking about there, he's saying, listen, what will God reward a man if he commits an adultery? And it's absolutely nothing. Isn't it funny how before the law, Job knows that adultery is a great sin? Abimelech, when, when God approaches him and says, you know, he's with Sarah, he says, you got another man. He says, well, wait a minute. This is a great sin. And yet in America today, adultery is not a great sin. Something proclaimed and pro pro uh, performed on television. Is not destruction to the wicked? Yes, it is. And strange punishments to the workers of iniquity? You now there's all kinds of ways man can die. There are natural ways. There are stupid ways. There are all kinds of things that, things that God used to, to reap what you sow. Does not he see my ways and count all my steps? Yes, God does. All right, now here we go. This is Job speaking. Job is going to proclaim everything he does, and God does not rebuke him, and God does speak in this book. He doesn't come down like, like the rich one knew. He does, Jesus does not say, you're wrong. God does not tell Job, you're wrong. Job has done everything correct, and that's what he's trusting in. He's self-righteous. And there's nothing wrong with that. A sin, one of the sins is you're counting on what you're doing. That was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and all of them in Jesus' time. Look at what we're doing. And yet they died and went to hell. Job. If I have walked with vanity, uselessness, no value, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity. Let what I've done, my walking, let it be put in a balance. Where, where did I go? What did I do with my feet? Put it in a balance. And no Christian worries about where he walks. Christians don't worry about walking into the wrong church. Because I like it. So Job says, count my feet where they walk. If my step has turned out of the way, if I have gone away from God, and my heart walketh after my eyes, and if any blot have cleaved to my hands. Job is right. He said, listen. If I stepped out of God's way, if my heart went after my eyes instead of God, listen, you're to give your heart to Jesus. You're to believe with, the, with thy heart and confess with thy mouth. It's a heart condition, never a head condition. That part of you that should reach out to God, Job is saying, listen, if, if that part of me is, is put the lust of the eyes, I'm guilty. 
Oh, Christians would get death. Where their feet, where their heart goes. Then let me sow. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Now, don't you dare try this as a newborn Christian, because Satan will love. Job saying, listen, if I've done so wrong, then let me sow my wrongness. Job is so confident of himself that, listen, if I have done so wrong, go ahead and give me the payment back. You don't want everyone to say that to God. You don't ever want to hear Satan hear you say that. Because Job has already sowed the fruits of sin. He lost it all. And let another eat. Let someone else enjoy my meals, my food. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. Your children are already gone. Verse 9. Remember, with the heart, man is to believe unto God and obey God. Not the head. And the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. In Jeremiah 17, 9. Your heart is wicked, not your head. If my heart have been deceived by a woman. Well, look at that. Matthew 5, 28. Jesus said, Whosoever looked upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. Jesus quotes Job in a roundabout way. Job forecasts what Jesus says. Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. So listen, if I've gone outside anybody but my wife, if I've looked for my neighbor's wife, before the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not look upon thy neighbor's wife, you know, to cover her. This is before the Ten Commandments. Then, look what he says. Then, let my wife grind unto another. She gets a, she gets a divorce. Did you see that? If I've committed adultery with a woman, my wife can go on to another man. And Jesus backs this up. He says, except to be for fornication. If a man steps out on his wife, that woman is, uh, is scripturally sound to go find somebody else. He's untrustworthy. You've broken the trust of your marriage of the vows. That woman is going to be looking around every corner of this guy. Every time he calls in late, every time he steps out, she's going to wonder. And let others bow down upon her. Now that is not an act of worship. That is a greeting how Americans shake hands. Bowing down is, how you doing? Uh, the only way I can describe it. It's an oriental gesture of of hello, I guess you can say. For this is a heinous or heinous crime. Before God ever told Moses anything before Moses is born. Yea, it is iniquity to be punished by the judges. 10 and 11, I'm going to break these down for you from now on as we go through this, these verses. 10 and 11 is about adultery. And Job says before the law, the judges were to pronounce a judgment against adultery. Now, if that judgment was as the law is death or what have you, I don't know, it's not mentioned. But it, Job says that in his time, if a man committed adultery, he was appeared before the judge. The judges today are committing adultery. All right, verse 12. For it is a fire that, cons that consumeth to destruction and would rot out all my increase. If I committed adultery, if I committed adultery, that, that, that act that is, is a fire is going to destroy my life. And it does. It ruins trust. It breaks the family apart. Verse 13, if I did despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant, 
when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God rises up and when he visiteth, what shall I answer him? Did not he that make me in the womb make him and did not one fashion us in the womb? Now this right here is Job is a good employer. And he speaks about when, when his maid servant or his maid manservant contend with him. There was an argument. I mean, you're going to get in arguments. It's going to happen. And he's like, listen, who am I? I am just like that person that's doing the work for me. We're human beings. We're under God. God made him. God made me. Job was no overlord. Job was no some lord. Job wasn't a, a, a slave owner. Job took care of his people, and when they had a complaint, he would listen to them. And he would work it out between them. Job dwelt well with labor relations without having no unions. And he acknowledged them just like him, made by God, created by God. And not no monkeys or anything else. So he had proper labor relations. 16. If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my, notice the mind, the pronouns and all that. If I have eaten my morsel myself alone, and the fatherless has not eaten thereof, for from my youth he was brought up with me, as with a father, and I have guided her from my mother's womb. Job here is now talking about the widows and fatherless. Job made sure that if he knew anybody who was a widow or a fatherless in his condition, he took care of them. And he says, listen, this one that could be fatherless, we grew up together. We were pals. And in this condition, why would I turn my back on him? Job puts America and her Christianity in the sewer pipe. Because Job is not even a Christian, and he is much better. Job doesn't have the assurance of salvation. Job doesn't have a Bible, and he puts a lot of Christian people to shame by their conduct. Job took care of those that were in need. If I have seen my, any perish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, if he were not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless when I saw my help in the gate, all right, well, before we get into Judgment 22, he's saying, listen, I helped those. I gave them blankets when they were cold. I took care of them. I made sure they had food. I made sure that they had shelter. Made sure they had what they needed. Job provided. And there's nowhere commanded for Job to love thy neighbor as thyself. As the law and as Jesus spoke. There's no recording. There is no written record. But I am safe and sure to say, as God put it in the law, as Jesus spoke it on this planet, as God wrote, told Paul to write it, I guarantee in the ears of Job, this is what God told him to do. And he obeyed. We have no written account of what God said to Job. But you match it with the law, you match it with the, with the, the words of Jesus, you write it with the words of Paul, God told this to Job. And Job obeyed. Job did everything God told him to do. He just relied on the gifts. I mean, he relied on the work. Excuse me. So what's that verse in, in Ephesians 2, 9? Least any man boast. Job is boasting of his works. No Christian. When you get somebody that's in the church, Oh, we got 5,000 people saved in that last meeting. You're rejoicing in your works. And not in what Jesus did. When we had 32 in the Sunday school and 42 in it, you're boasting in your works. You are doing what Job is doing. And you're ruling out God. 
He says, if I've done all this stuff, if I have not helped people. Now, here he goes again, verse 22. Job is so sure of himself. Look, let my right arm fall off my shoulder blade and my arm be broken from the bone. And I don't think Job is just, just saying words. I believe Job is saying, listen, God, if, if I'm not right, I want you to break my arm. That's something wonderful. That Job is so sure of himself, and he's so wrong, but he's so right. That rich young ruler, hey, I've done that. Out of my parents, I, I didn't commit adultery, da, 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 da. And Jesus left out the coveting. He let, knows they have all the commandments. He left out the coveting. And he said, go, go sell what thou hast and give it to the poor. Job did it. And he went away in tears. For destruction from God was a terror to me. Why did Job do all this? Because he feared God. And you can't even get a born-again Christian and give somebody a gospel tract. Because they don't fear God. Yes, Job is boasting of himself. Yes, Job is, is relying on the works. But he also did it because he feared God. He feared that God would tear his arm off. He feared that God would break his arm. He feared that, listen, his wife would go to somebody else. Job feared God. And this is the God of the Old Testament. That, listen, God just, in Job's time, he just read about a universal flood of all those that were wicked. He learned practically firsthand of Adam and Eve being driven out of the garden. He's learned firsthand of the Tower of Babel and what God did to those men. And Job is, I better fear God. I better do right. And by reason of his right highness, I could not endure. If it wasn't for God. You know what Job's saying? I wouldn't be able to live. He's giving God the credit, but look, look at all the things he's done. Look at all the things he's saying. And you know what? Reading this chapter, how far can you get in the verses before you've been stricken down? But yet Job has been 100% so far. And we can't match up to Job. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and we can't even live better than Job. That is a disgrace. Because Job had no Bible. Job had no... Jesus Christ's blood, sinless atonement. Job did not have the security of salvation that we have today. Job did not have assembly that would gather together like we have today. Job could not get on the phone and go call people like we have today. But Job is more righteous than we are in the church today. Job told these three guys to your face. You're miserable comforters. You are physicians of no value. You don't know what you're talking about right to their face. And you got preachers today who can't do it. Where were the preachers when they did this monkey trial? Where were the preachers when they said that sodomy is going to be a marriageable thing in America? No, I want my gun. I want my gun. I want my gun. You purposely to buy a gun, and you purposely going to say you shoot somebody, in the mind count of the Bible, that is murder. You don't have to agree with me, but God will. And you want your guns and all that, and when have you stood up to witness for Jesus Christ, and do what Christ has done for you, and reward Him. He goes on, verse 24, If I had made gold my hope, or have said to fine gold, thou art my confidence. 
If I rejoice because my wealth was great, and because my head, my hand had gotten much. Job is talking about if I have valued riches more than God. If I said because of all this gold, listen, the guy in the parable of the book of Luke, you know, look at all this I got, I'm going to tear it all down, and I'm going to rebuild, I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry, and God says, thou fool, thy soul shall be acquired tonight. You're going to die and go to hell. Job did not rely on his money. Well, I'll tell you what, I got this much, but now I'm going to get more, 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 more. Yeah, 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 and I ain't going to do you nothing. The more you get, the more troubles you got. The love of money. Not money, the love of money. Job did not rely on his riches, and he was a rich man. Realize Job wasn't just a judge. He had he had he, he had all these animals that were used and all that. All right, twenty six. If I beheld the sun, I mean, there's a lot of churches out there that are building multi million dollar buildings, and they're going to be pray they praise that. They have to. They got to pass that plate and beg for money to pay for the rest of the thing. If I beheld the sun when it shined. Or the moon walking in brightness. That right there he's talking about idol worship. Job did not worship Baal. Job did not worship Asterisk. There's your male and your female deity of all the, the heavenly. Job did not read his horoscope. Job did not sacrifice his children to Baal. Job and his family did not lay out and worship the sun at the beach. Job did not have a sunrise service. Job didn't worship the blue moon, the full moon, and cuckoo moon, and all the other moon things. But I guarantee, like back in Revel uh, back in Genesis, he used them as for signs, times, and seasons to plant. But he didn't worship it. Verse twenty-seven. And my heart has made secretly entice. My heart has been secretly enticed, and my mouth has kissed my hand. This also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I should have denied the God that is above. Job is talking about self-worship. If I've kissed my hand, look at all I've done. Yeah, I'm very Brown here, Job. And Job's also saying, listen, I've kissed no man, I've worshipped no man. And Job again says that this, along with adultery, worshipping, idolatry, and all that, were to be punishable by judges in his time, before any law was mentioned. If you didn't serve God of creation, you can't say Bible, if you didn't serve the God of creation, you can't say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you didn't serve the God of creation, the Almighty God, they brought you to the judge. Look at that. But yet in America, you can worship any God you want and you get no fines. You get no punishments. And matter of fact, the Constitution says you can worship any God you want. And you wonder why this, this country is going down the toilet. Well, let me be the plunger and keep on flushing it more now. All right. Verse 29. If I, Job, rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. Job did not obey the golden rule. Do unto others as others do unto you. Job did not do that before the law. Before Jesus said, love thy neighbor. Before John said, you know, he that has love, you, you know, when you show to the brother. If you don't love the brother, how can you love God? Job obeyed. And when his enemy... When someone hated him, had destruction and misery, Job did not rejoice. 
And yet there are Christians and churches and churches and Christians today that will rejoice when somebody has left their church has failed. They will rejoice when President Obama falls. You say he's not a Christian. That verse doesn't say anything about being a Christian. President Obama is an enemy to the common man of America, but still, if something were to happen to him and his family tomorrow, I pray to God that I will not rejoice. If something were to happen tomorrow to President Obama and his family, how much would Facebook light up with cheering and, and clapping and rejoicing that something has happened to the President of the United States? But what would happen? The President of the United States got on CB, CBN and ABC and all that network and said, I'm going to have a presidential State of the Union address. And he gets up there and no one cares about him. And he were to tell the entire world, I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And from this day forward, I'm going to serve the God of the Bible. And if you don't like it, you can throw me out of his office. What would cheering and gestures and everything be? On Facebook, if he were to do that. Makes me sick how these Christians treat our president. When the Bible says by Peter, and the Bible says by Paul, and the Bible says by Solomon, you are not to do that of your leaders. Violation of scriptures. And you'll call to answer to it. If the men of my tabernacle said not, all oh, that we had of his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. And this, excuse me, the stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveler. 31 and 32 was Job was not stingy. He never held back. He took care of the people that lived in his house, my tabernacle. That's not the tabernacle in the wilderness and all that. That's Job's home and the stranger. He says, of him that his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. No one in his household, no one on his plantation, no one on his farms, no one of his servants ever lacked. No one ever said, oh, look at Job over that fat cat. He's got so much and we got so little. No one could ever say that about Job. Can you say that about Americans today? Can you say that about Walmart and the owners thereof? How many people got to live out of their garbage cans? They buy the products from China. How many Chinese today are living in poverty? But great Walmart is big in bucks. Prices are falling while others are rising. The stranger that lodged in the street, when somebody came into his area, when someone came into his town and they had nowhere to stay, Job said, come with me into my house. I'll give you all that you need. And you see that in countless stories of the Bible. You can't do that in America today. You cannot trust anybody in America to buy them in your family inside your house without something, some hideous crime happening. You can't even pick up a hitchhiker today. Because these great Americans, this great country that we have, may pull a gun on you and steal your car. That's the gratitude of America. And Job will stand up and judge the Americans of this country. And say, I did it without a Bible. I did it without Jesus Christ. And what is your excuse? Verse 33. If I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom, did I fear a great multitude or did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silence and went not out of the door? Job did not cover his sin. Job brought the sacrifice that God told him to bring. And we see that in chapter 1. He was bringing sacrifices for his children in case they cursed God in their hearts, I believe it said. How many Christians today, well, if the rapture would happen right now, how many Christians today in a Bible believe in King James Church? 
will stand at the judgment seat of Christ as it all burns up because you never put it under the blood. You never even thought about it. You never even read 1 John 1, 9. You go on with your sins. You go on with your sins. And you don't ask God to wash them. You don't repent. You don't do right. Job did. Job did right. Can you imagine Job in eternity come up to a Christian and smacking him across the head? He would have all right. Because Job did not have what we have, and we don't serve God of what we have, and Job serves God of what he didn't have. Everybody, King James Bible, King James Bible, King James Bible. Yeah, but you don't read it. You don't do what it says. Verse 35. By the way, out of the door, that, that's something that the sin lieth at the door in Genesis 4, was it? When God speaking to, to Cain. Job had first-hand account what went on in Genesis 1, 2, 3, and 4 without Moses ever being around. Look what he said about Adam. How did he know Adam covered up his sins? Where could he read that? Moses was not born. Where did he get that? He got that from God. He got that from stories handed down from mother to father to children to children to their children to their children. And what do you got today in the churches of stories? You are leaving the, the, the Bible stories of David and Goliath, of Samson. You are leaving the stories of Jonah and the whale for this stupidity and programmed and junk and patched the pie and this other junk. God smack you across the head with a rod. Leaving the Bible for worldly wickedness. Patch the pirate. Wow. Find me one pirate in the, in the Bible. Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me. And he's going to in a few more chapters. God is going to answer Job. You know why God don't answer Christians today? Because says, oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me. They don't desire God. They have no repentance of sins. They have no works of, of thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. No, they want to do what they want to do. They want to live the life they want to live. They want to trust the government. They want to trust plastic. They want to trust green. They want to skip out church and whatever they feel like it. They don't love the Lord. And you have all right to question their salvation. When Jesus said, Him that keepeth my words loveth me. Job's desire is he wants God to speak to him. And we've seen that over and over. And that my adversary had written a book. Well, Job is written, but it's not written by his adversary. Uh, what's his name? Get his name right. Elihu is the author of the book. And Elihu is the only one that helps Job outside of God. Bildad, Elphaz, and the other moron didn't write the book. What? Bildad? So far. So far, so good, I guess. This is two or three times Job, oh, my words were written. And God answers him. Didn't Jesus would say that if you were asking the Father, he would say, ask in my name, Jesus' name, it will be granted unto you? Now, Job couldn't claim Jesus' name. But God answered his prayer, and we have the book of Job. Now, can you picture in glory as the King James Bible sits there in the heavenly, heavenly new, of New Jerusalem, and all these Bible correctors come up, and they're looking through the book, and Job comes up and smacks him across the head? How'd you change my word? You weren't there, you moron. Dr. Pepper, my foot. You and those letters behind your name. And you and you tried to change what I and, and my friends said? 
Didn't you read the Bible? It says don't add and subtract. Why don't they change those verses in the Bible? Every word says do not add, do not subtract, do not change my word. Every single modern Bible has that first say. They don't change that. Nick and poopies. Idiots. Verse 36. Surely I would take it upon my... Ugh. I don't know what happened with my tongue there. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. So back in the olden days, when, when, when kids would go to school, they would take their books, pile them up, and put them with a, like, a, like a belt kind of thing, hold it there, and they throw it over their shoulder and go walking down to school or coming home from school. Or today, you've got a book bag, and you put it on your back, and where is it harnessed? It's harness on your shoulders. You can't escape the King James Bible. Your book bag that lays on your back or, you know, your pocketbook that you put comes from Job. What's it crown to me? Wouldn't it be interesting if Job gets a crown in heaven? Are there rewards for Old Testament saints that do right? Isn't that something to think about? I don't know the answer to that, but wouldn't it be great to have Job walking around a crown and have him born again Christians today walking around their head bald? Wouldn't that be a testimony? And if Job and the Old Testament saints, any, or even under the law, if they were to get some kind of reward like a crown or something like that, and to cast them at Jesus, which it will be their Savior, because those that in Abraham's bosom waited for Jesus to die, waited for him to be buried, waited for him to come over and release them, and to be risen from the grave. Wouldn't it be great if they had crowns? And yet Christians today don't care. I would declare unto him the number of my steps. To him it would be the adversary that we were talking about, I think. The number of my steps as a prince would I go near unto him. I don't know what that's I don't know what that's saying. Alright, number number thirty eight or verse thirty eight. This if you ever deal with somebody who says I kept the whole law, I know we're not in the law. I'm perfect. Watch this one. If my land, do you ever hear someone say my lands? Oh, my lands. You got it out of the Bible. That's not what Job's saying. He's saying, oh, my land, cry against me. If my land cry against me. Let me ask you a question before we go any further. Where in the Bible did the land cry out? When Abel's blood. God told that Cain, your, brother, your brother's blood Speak it. This verse is talking about two things. Right now it's talking about, as we stop reading here, Job never murdered anybody. Okay, let's read on. There's another point. Or that the furrows, that's when you, when you, you, you put little paths and little hills inside the gardens. Likewise thereof complain. Huh? Not giving it its rest. Well, Job is saying here, listen, land is going to cry out one day. They charge too much for me. They took advantage of the people of the land. I gave them corn and they burnt it up. I gave them corn and they made whiskey. I made corn for the land and they made fuel. They took tobacco and grew it and made cigarettes. Using the ground that God gave, the plants that God gave for a waste. This country will, will, will oh, was something under, ground under, or, or plow under. 
Plow under means when the government comes and offers you a certain amount of money and you go through your right fields and you just grind it all up. And you don't pick them. For whatever reason they want you to do it. And you take the money and now you're in control of the government. When you take precious land you put cement on it and you can't grow nothing so you're going to have a bad shopping mall. So they can charge you outrageous prices. I used to be a farm. Now look how much they charge for a can of corn. Look how much they charge for a loaf of bread. And it's 99% air. You don't think God will call that a question? If I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, for have, or have caused, I hate that, there's an F note there, it looks like a four, or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life. Job was proper with his crops and his workers. He took care of the ground and did the ground right and took care of his workers and made sure they had a living and could survive. He paid his workers properly and made sure that the work in the fields would not kill them with not having OSHA. Job made sure all the stuff that he had, all the wagons, all the, the machinery, all the tools were in proper working condition. That if there was any accidents, it was truly an accident or the person's stupidity. Say that about any American corporation today. Say that about anybody working for a fast food industry that they are paid fair for the work they do. And I call you a liar. These big companies are going to stand before God one day. And they're going to have to give an account. And Job speaks for the last time. He says, if this, if I have not done so, let thistles grow. And that's a plant that you don't want. It's a, it's a weed. It's a prickly bush, I believe. Let thistles grow instead of wheat. You don't want thistles. You want wheat. Let cockle, another weed, instead of barley. You want barley. You don't want cockle. Wouldn't it be great if God gives this country weeds instead of crops one day? The words of Job are ended. We take a new turn in the next chapter. Tomorrow night, Lord willing. But Job has spoken of what he is. And you know what? He's not lying. But you know what? That's what he's trusting in. That's what he's putting his confidence in. It's not in God. He's Now, don't get me wrong. He's doing it for God. But he's tipped the scales over where there's more reliance of what he's done than what God has done through him. And you can be like this as a born again Christian. You can get to the point, listen, you know, look what I'm doing. Look, you know, look at me. And nobody's doing this like I'm doing it. No one's, you know, they're not doing it like I'm doing it. Uh, I, you know, they're not tithing like I'm tithing. They don't give the missionaries like I'm giving. They don't pray as often as I. Listen, a Christian could do the same thing. And still be right with God. But you tip the scales to yourself more. And Galatians 2 9. I gotta quote 2, I gotta quote 2 8. I just left my head. Uh, well, 2 9 is, uh, this is my mind is one. Least any man boasts. That's what Job is doing. It's not of works. Our salvation is based upon Jesus Christ. 
It's not what we do. We do what we do because of Jesus Christ. Not for salvation. Because if that was to be, where we get to heaven? Job and that rich young ruler would outbeat us all. You couldn't picture yourself in heaven outside of Jesus Christ with Job and that rich ruler because look at their account. Listen, you can't even be in Daytona Beach as a Christian man and not see things, with, you know, according to Matthew 5, 28, where the women dress. Job never did. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes. God is never going to charge Job with adultery, both physical and, and uh, spiritual. Job's land is never going to cry out. Did you know it's a sin to start a garden and never finish it? It is a sin that, that the weeds will grow up. The weeds are a sign of verse 40 of being lazy. And show me where God wants lazy Christians. We talked about where God, where Job did not cover his sins. He brought him to God and brought, the, brought what he needed to bring. Whatever God told him. He took care of the poor people. Like I, I said in, in things before, you got to properly take care of poor people. Today. you got to make sure they are poor. you got to make sure they're not going to use it for whiskey. I mean, you got to do it properly. You don't turn everybody away. Just turn them away and say, oh, you know, they're not. No. You never trust in your riches and your money. But Job can. He's in the Old Testament. He just went a little bit over. And look who I am. After 30 chapters of being nitpicked by these three guys, being accused of everything under the sun, 31, Job is not wicked. He's not. He has proved it. But, oh, he's believing on what he's done. Today, this will be a re religious man. And you know what? As I close, Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and Muslims make Christians today sick. They're going out there doing everything that their religion tells them to do. A good Catholic will go something will go seven days a week for the mass because his church tells them to do it. And you can't even get a Christian to show up Sunday morning for church. You can't get them to show up Sunday night, and you can't even get them for Wednesday. That's a sorry condition. And then when you do get them to church, a lot of them. I don't know what the present. A lot of them are there just so you can admire them. Their conduct, their 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 reactions, and what they do is to be seen and to look at me. And Jesus said, you know, those Pharisees, they go, I'm going to pray now. Look how much money I'm giving. I'm father such and such. Religious Phariseeism. That is not Job. Job does all this, and we read it, because he feared God. What's your excuse, Christian? What is your excuse? I don't ever preach that God gives excuses. God does not give me no permission slip or hallway passes for you to not do what you're supposed to do. Don't ask me. I'll close right there.